Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Discussion Corner episode 5, I think it is. Ooh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't check, it just came to me then, but I think it's 5. Um, okay. It's quite a good talk on this week, because obviously it was announced yesterday that the Euros are officially moving to 2022 now, and Phil Neville will be departing as England manager next summer. So I think it's like July 2021, they said. Which is like yeah. yeah, which is upon the um, expiry of his con- his current contract. Um, I think firstly, I f- I just found that a bit weird. Like I'm gonna go straight in and say I find it a bit go weird. Straight that, like, in, girl. Go on. That like they're announcing it now that he's leaving next year. Like why would like I don't I mean I I get why, but I also don't understand why. Cause I'm just like, well, thanks for the heads up and like. We now know that you're actively seeking someone else out for like the next tournament, like because you literally have Olympics, Euros, World Cup, one after another. Mm. Like, like there's going to be major tournaments for three summers straight. So like you obviously have the same person in charge of that. But then, how do you plan for a new manager if the old manager, if the current slash old manager isn't leaving and until the Olympics officially start. It is just odd. Like, surely you can't expect a new manager to come in literally right before a major tournament. Like, it doesn't make much sense to me because obviously there's going to have to be some sort of period of time where this new appointed manager has a few training camps, has an idea of the players yeah. as they are. But then you sort of think, well, is this new manager going to be announced earlier? And then they're sort of going to fuse together and yeah. progress forward. So Phil's still having a bit of input in terms of who he thinks is developing well, playing well, or just giving this new manager a bit of insight into the team, as well as another new coach being there at the same time like that's to me seems the most likely option but it does just seem a bit odd to sack someone so close to repetitive years of major tournaments like it surely that that's not going to be beneficial for like it's going to cause a bit of disruption within the whole flow of how those tournaments go yeah and like on the point of like oh is is he gonna announce someone like say they announce someone like in january and then they they then like Phil sort of becomes the assistant and sort of like they make yeah. a problem together. Like that's all well and good, but you're telling me that if you're getting a an already well known women's football manager such as Jill Ellis or Emma Hayes, like they're two names that are being thrown about, that they're gonna wanna have a six month plan with Phil Neville going into a, a major tournament like the Olympics. Like that's not I don't think that's gonna bode well for, for either of them because yeah. Like, Jill Ellis has achieved a lot more than Phil Neville has in the women's game. Like, so if you're getting someone of her calibre, she's going to want to come in straight away and make... Put a mark down, sort of. Yeah, make that team hers. Same with Emma Hayes. Like, she's such a strong character, so she's not going to want to be sort of second to Phil for six months, and then as soon as the Olympics come, be like, oh, yeah, yeah, here's your team. Good luck. Yeah. Like, that's not really going to work. So then... It's sort of trying to find the balance of that. But then, like you're saying, you can't say to a manager, oh, welcome in July, and then throw them straight into a tournament. Yeah, in the deep end, yeah. So, like, I I think either way, either way, if it's a high-profile person coming in, I don't think that'll work. I seen, I think it was Emma who might have tweeted it before, someone along those lines, who said, like, if it's someone like Casey Stoney, who's obviously only been, like, been manager, this is her second season at United, is it? Yeah. It's, like, full season. So, like, she was obviously second to Phil for, like, a little bit at England before she took the United job. So then if it's someone like her and they're sort of planning for the future and she come, she does come in in January, January and shadows Phil Neville for, like, six months, sort of makes the team her own, while like Phil's still the front man sort of type thing and then goes into the tournament like that that could possibly work but then I don't I don't see Casey Stoney being wanting no. the England job right now no I think she's way too early on 
yeah. in her managing career. And I think just the way that she talks about her United team, the way that she presents herself as the manager, you can just tell that she loves being the Man United manager. And I can't see her giving that up so soon because I think not only because she's got a sense of loyalty to the club, it's the players she's got loyalty to, it's the fans that she's got loyalty to, and to completely just jump ship after only two seasons as a actual full-time professional coach to me that doesn't make sense and I think although I really I rate her as a as a manager yeah. well and truly like I'd be the first to sing her praises I don't think she's ready for that sort of step just yet I think in a few years time who knows she might be might be involved and she might be called upon but I just think at the moment that to me that doesn't make much sense and you could probably say the same for Emma Hayes as well. I think not in the terms of she's not ready. I think she'd be ready for, for anything. She's that good. But I just think she loves Chelsea and she wants to win as many things with Chelsea as possible. And she's building something there at the moment. She's bringing in all these new players, Sam Kerr included. You can tell she's got a she's got a strategy in a in a in a brain that's panning out over several years. So to me, that one also, I think. I mean, Jill Ellis, I would love for Jill Ellis to be yeah. the manager. And to me, it sort of works quite well because she's just finished with the US and now Phil's been announced. She's had time to have like her time off. And then now, is she looking for a new job? I don't know, but I think we'd all happily welcome her with open arms for sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't see Jill, Jill Ellis as like a club manager. I only, no. I only look at her as like an international like obviously she's yeah. in the US for a long time. But also what you've got to think about, we've just took Dawn Scott from the US. Yeah. She worked with Jill Ellis like for a good couple of years. So like it's sort of like reuniting that partnership as well. And like if, like if you can go and like take Jill Ellis and Dawn Scott right from under like the best team in the world and like entice her to come here. Why can't you entice Jill Ellis to come here? Do you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. Like, going back to Emma Hayes, like, she 100% would like, take the England job, but like you're saying, she wants to win with Chelsea. And if, for whatever reason, the Champions League doesn't go ahead again this season and they just start it up again next se- when next season starts again. She's not, she wants that Champions League with Chelsea and she, oh, yeah. she, she'll stay until she gets it. She's just that type of person. So there's yeah. no way that she leaves Chelsea halfway through a season to shadow Phil Neville. No. <laughs> I don't think that would work anyway. To then no. be, to go yeah. into the tournament and like miss out on winning that with Chelsea. So like there's so many different what whatever way you look at it, someone's given something up. So like the FA are they giving up like the opportunity to get like a really top class manager at the right time or mm. a manager like Emma Hazel is, is going to give up something that she wants to go and do yeah. her job at this do you know what I mean yeah I still can't wrap my head around the fact that he's still like he's still gonna be yeah. involved building up to such a massive stretch of events like that's what I can't wrap my head around you would have said okay Phil we'll give you till December. We'll give you till the end of the year, for example. And then someone comes in and has that stretch of a few months to be like, okay, I'm in charge here. I, I'm going to help prepare. Like in that stretch of time from January till the Olympics, you could fit in probably two or three camps there, yeah. including, not no, it wouldn't be the She Believes, would it? But include like that amount of time. Oh, it would be the She Believes. Yeah, She Believes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd have a tournament to sort of participate in, stretch the legs, see how it goes. You'd probably have another two camps then before the Olympics as well. So you're thinking that's quite a good amount of time to, one, not only know the players, but follow them in the leagues as well, which they probably will have already done, but really closely quite follow them and yeah. implement things that they want to see, and etc. Just- but it's weird. Like, that would work for, like, someone like Emma Hayes or Casey Stoney because they know the league, they know the players. Yeah. And someone like Jill Ellis, who probably hasn't paid that much attention up until probably the last year or so of the WSL yeah. and of England and, like, this current England squad and, like, the players coming through. 
she's not going to know how it all works, how the players work. So to have like Phil Neville still there right up until the Olympics basically starts, sort of the players still going to him and talking to him about things and etc. It's it's just going to be weird. Like that's the only way I can describe it is weird. Yeah. Like it's almost like undermining, going behind yeah. going behind the back of the the not in like a spiteful way, but I think it would just happen naturally. Yeah, but I, I just don't understand why he'd. Well, it might not have been his decision. Well, I think in the end, be like, see out your contract, finish that, and then see you later. But well, I just think if you look at his whole sort of time as the manager. Mm. I just feel like he could have done so much better. Yeah, not in like a horrible, horrible way. I just think. He just wasn't the right fit to be England women's manager. Although he, he's he got a real good understanding of the game, I just think he didn't utilise the players as well as he could have done. And maybe someone like Jill Ellis or, or the other two names that we mentioned, in my opinion, they might be able to sort of like drag out what's so good about all those players individually and then sort of mash it all together to make them work so much better as a, as a group. Like, it, there's there's pros and cons of like Neville's time. Like obviously he's won as she believes, and then got us fourth in the World Cup, which is like amazing. But then you look at you look at in between tournaments. Like we had we did that we did have a really good World Cup. Like we did there was a couple of games where we were a bit off the mark at times. But like you're not gonna perform amazing in every single match like back to back. Like in the build up to the World Cup, we were brilliant. Yeah. Afterwards, like we have gone right down. Like no, no one had like no one had looked at us and go, "Oh, I'm scared of them." No. They didn't know our weaknesses. So like, I, th- I feel like a lot of people are only judging on the past like six months, whereas like there's another like year and a bit before that. Do you know what I mean? But I just think I just don't think he's never been. He's never got a hundred percent out of this yeah. England team, which is like what a lot of us expected, and like especially like like, like I said, from, probably from she believes twenty eighteen uh, twenty nineteen to end of the World Cup, like the players that we had in those tournaments, and like the, you couldn't, I don't think you could have picked anyone better. You literally couldn't have picked any other player to go to that tournament. Like, obviously, if Jordan Nobbs was fit, she would have gone to the World Cup and whatever, and she believes. But, like, take Jordan Nobbs out of the scenario, you literally couldn't pick better than no. others. Maybe Farrah Williams, I would like her to have gone, but, like, do you know what I mean? Like, Karen Carney and stuff like that did, did well. Yeah. But, like, I don't see... I just don't see how much more he, could, he can do in the next year, basically. With no, yeah, yeah, it's a it, yeah a year. So like, and if you think about it, you're probably not you're not having. I don't think there'll be any international games for England, both men's and women's, this year. Now, I think given the scenario, and then given when the season starts again, like say for example, the seasons don't start again until like end of June. Mm-hmm. They'll want that finished, and then the players will get a little bit of a break, but then they'll go straight into next season. Mm-hmm. And they won't, they won't want many. Dis- there might be time for like one international break or something like October, November when they normally do it. But then again, it depends on when next season starts. So say, for example, the next time the England women camp meets up is January for like a proper camp ahead of like she believes. Like, what what what's he doing in that time? Whereas, like, if you got someone in now. There's six months out there. Yeah. Plan what they want to do for England, do you know what I mean? Like, he's not going to be wanting to plan. Like, re- like Realistically, he'll do as much as he possibly can, but he's probably thinking, well, I'm not going to manage them in the Olympics. So, like, yeah. It's not would- going to be down to him anymore. Yeah, exactly. So he's, he's, not going to be, he's not going to be the one making all the big decisions come probably the Olympics roster. 
Mm. Yeah, it's it's it is it's just very odd, and, and and at the moment, as it stands, without any more clarification by literally just a statement of the given, it to me it doesn't very bode very well for the future, no. because there's just so much uncertain uncertain uncertainty uncertainty mm-hmm. that yeah there we go <laughs> so much un- uncertainty as to what how the logistics of it is all going to work like yeah just. Just, just doesn't seem right because yeah to me what what's the point you're obviously like the fa is obviously unhappy with the way that things have gone recently so how is he going to be able to turn it around in a year for something that he's not going to then carry on after that's what i just can't understand and like it's such a waste of time the thing that only baffles me is that he's out his contracts till july the olympics is july so I'm like, what is the point? Like, yeah, like what? Like, is he going to go on the first of July and then the tournament's going to start on like the eleventh or what? Like whatever. I don't know. I don't know the dates. Yeah, yeah but like, like, yeah. I think there needs to be a little bit more clarification as to the actual what's going on. I just can't wait to hear the announcement of who it is because I'm so excited. Yeah. Like, if it was someone like Jill Ellis, like, oh my god. And I, melt. I was saying the other night, like, if someone like Jill Ellis is, was to come in, have an Olympics, which he's done twice before, I think, he, maybe only once, actually. I think it might have only been 2016. To then go into a Euros, which he's never done before, I don't think. And then a World Cup, which she won back-to-back. She could potentially win three World Cups back-to-back. <laughs> Imagine! Like, think about it. Like, the USA, they've got a great team. They've got a really good team. They've got a lot of young players coming in now. But, like, all their veterans, 2023 is a long time. <laughs> three, they're going to be three years older. So, like, a lot of their team has made, like, Kyle Lou, like, uh, like Becky, Becky Saga on at the back, Kelly O'Hara, like Tobin Heath, they're all going to be three years older, so they're not. They're probably not going to be starters in my eyes anyway. I mean, you don't know. They're like fit as anything, so like they probably will be. They're absolutely. Like oh, it's like thirty-seven, so like proper like ten and up. Do you know what I mean? But like, she so might about ten k for a breakfast. She's like, oh yeah, just just done like twenty-five k. I'm like, what are you? It's literally eight o'clock. Yeah. So like I mean, I'm just I'm just going off like age wise thinking of yeah. You never know, do you? Exactly. But then it that also goes for like England as well. Like are some of our players like early thirties. Beth Horton, Jill Scott. Scott, like Jordan Nobbs even. Jordan Nobbs is twenty eight now. So, so she be one when the next World Cup's up. So like she'll probably she like I mean, depending on what happens between now and the world, but like she's probably still around. You might still be in lockdown by then. Yeah, <laughs> the world will be the same at the, that point. But like, but like, the genuine things that like a manager coming in now has, has got to think about because you've literally got three major tournaments back to back. Do so you need to like think about your squads? For sure. You'll be wanting a long term plan, but if you've still got a manager that you're firing in charge, you can't necessarily make a long term plan. Exactly. Like, how are they going to come in and put their authority, like, put their authority down and say, like, I want this to happen? Because, Literally, like, I don't think you can. I don't think that's. My turn to go, well, no, this is still my squad until this date. And then there's exactly. a. Exactly. He might be as awkward as possible. Yeah. You never know. Never, never. We'll all just have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, we don't have to wait too long to know like what actually is going to happen. But you know, fingers crossed, we do. I, I mean, they'll make us wait as long as possible. Let's oh, be honest. They probably, yeah. they probably got their favorite. Probably sit there today, being like, "What are we going to do, lads? Like, what are we going to do? Like, what the hell's going on?" Literally. I mean, if, I think the names that are being like thrown about, like by like people, like just on Twitter and stuff like that, are like all really good managers so I feel like whoever we get is going to be able to do a good job but I just, I just don't know so like, I, I know I, I want to know and just know because I like to know everything yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, let us know in the comments below who you'd like to take over from Phil when the time comes anyone in particular um, 
who, who, who would you like say your your number? Jill Ellis, yeah, for sure. Jill Ellis. I think we talked to me, it'd be Jill Ellis, then Emma Hayes. And then if you're looking like three year, three or four years down the line, like Casey Stoney probably is like a good one to like fill in. There's probably loads more names that we've not even talked about that might come to the forefront. But I think for now, that's a solid, solid idea of who might be in and around. Well, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like the video, comment, subscribe to the channel. Check out the podcast from this week. We had a good discussion with Sam Miller about like her journey into the football media and all that stuff. Um, we've got another Skype another zoom Ooh. call sorry today with a with another guest for next week's video so we won't say who it is now but <laughs> so i'm really cool so i hope you enjoy that one when it comes out but yeah thanks for listening and we'll see you all next time with a new podcast bye